In this video, you're going to learn how to restrict the domain so that the inverse is a function. And we're going to go through two examples together. So let's start with this first example. If we have f of x is equal to the quantity x plus 3 squared, let's just graph this to get a sense of what this graph looks like. Now we know that x squared, that's a, a parabola shape, and the plus 3 here is going to have the opposite effect. It's going to shift the graph left 3. So this graph is going to look something like this, roughly, okay? Now, when you do the vertical line test, what the vertical line test, it tests to see if this graph here is a function, meaning for every x value, there's only one y value. And you can see that it passes that vertical line test. But there's something called the horizontal line test where you take a line like this and you scan up and down and you see if the graph crosses uh, more than once. And in this case, you can see that it does cross more than once which means that it fails that horizontal line test, meaning that the inverse is not a function. So for every y value, see how there's more than one x value? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna restrict the domain. Now we have two options with this problem. We can either say that we're gonna look at just this right branch of the graph, this part right here, or the left branch of the graph, because if I just look at one half of this parabola, it would pass that horizontal line test, meaning the horizontal line would only cross the graph at most once. So let's do this problem two different ways, so you can see both ways. So here at negative three, if we restrict the domain and say where x is greater than or equal to negative three, and we find the inverse now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna interchange the x and the y, and we're gonna solve for the new y. So when you think of f of x, you can think of this as our output or our y value. So we interchange the input and the output, or the x and the y, and then we solve for the new y. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the square root of both sides, okay, the square and the square root cancel. Remember when you take the square root of both sides of the equation, you get two answers, plus or minus, Okay, positive or negative. And so now we're down to y plus three is equal to positive or negative square root of x. And then if I subtract three from both sides, this comes out to, uh, let's see, plus or minus square root of x minus three equals y, or let's just flip it uh, over so we can see it from a different perspective here. y equals plus or minus the square root of x minus three. Now, Going back to this original graph here, let me make this a little bit darker. See, we said the domain is what the x's can be. x is greater than or equal to negative three. The range is what the y's can be. And here you can see that y is greater than or equal to zero. But what happens when you interchange the x and the y, the domain and the range switch as well because the domain is associated with the x and the range is associated with the y, right? So what happens here is we're gonna look at this graph and when you find the inverse, you're reflecting that graph over the line y is equal to x. That's what happens when you find the inverse. And so if you look at this branch of the, the right branch of this graph, when I fold it over this line y equals x, we're gonna get a graph that looks something that looks like that, okay? It's just the mirror image. Now, when you look at this here, you say, oh, okay, so that means that this is y is equal to the positive square root of x minus three, okay? And you could write this in the inverse notation, f inverse of x, that's what this minus one represents, equals square root of x minus three, and that's this branch right here. Now, if we were to do this another way here, by looking at the left branch, okay, so let's maybe draw this as a dashed or dotted line like that, now we're saying, okay, let's let the x be less than or equal to negative three. When we take this dash graph and we refold it over the line y equals x, we're gonna get this graph right here, which this graph is the graph y is uh, equal to negative square root of x minus three. So depending on which part of the graph that you use, you have to kind of pay attention when you find the inverse. Now what's interesting is, See, here I've written this in inequality notation. Let's write it in the interval notation. So the domain is gonna be from negative three to infinity, and the range is gonna be from zero uh, to infinity. But what happens when we find our, our inverse graph, okay, over here, 
Remember how we said the domain and the range switch? So this range here would really become the domain here, and that's gonna be uh, where x is greater than or equal to zero, or you could say from zero to infinity. And you can see that's what's happening right here for, for the domain. Now, as far as the range of this inverse function, the range would be uh, negative three to positive infinity. And you can see this is going from negative three and upward like that. So what you can see is that if you find the domain and the range on the original graph, by interchanging those, you'll know what the domain and the range are on the inverse graph. And so that'll help you when you're graphing and it'll just help you when you're writing your notation. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, for example number two now, we have f of x is equal to two times the absolute value x minus one plus two. Let's start off by graphing this to get a sense of what this looks like. We know that this graph is gonna be going uh, right one up two, and so this is where the vertex of the absolute value graph is, and we know it's being stretched vertically by a factor of two, so this is gonna have kind of like a slope of two. You're going up two over one, up two over one, and so there's our absolute value graph. Okay, now when we look at this, we can see that it's failing that horizontal line test, right? So that tells you for a given y value, you can see there's more than one x value, which means that the inverse is not gonna be a function. So what we're gonna do in order to make the inverse a function, we're gonna restrict the domain, meaning what the x values can be. And so let's take a look at this right branch of the graph right here. Let's see right here where x is one. If we just go to where it's right of one, just this right branch, let me make it a little bit thicker, a little bit wider here so we can see it a little bit better. Now when we do the horizontal line test, you can see it crosses only at most once. So that tells us that the inverse will be a function. So let's go ahead and put our restriction here. Let's say when x is greater than or equal to one, or we'll just say from, for our domain, we'll say one uh, to infinity. Now the range is gonna be the y values. You can see that that's gonna be from two to infinity. Now let's go ahead and find the inverse. So when we find the inverse, remember we switch the x and the y, and we solve for the new y. So if I do that, we get x is equal to, now let's take a look at this line for a moment. So this, this is really like a line, half of this absolute value graph, and this line, you can see if I kind of continue it down like this, okay, that's our line. And so it has a slope of two and a y-intercept of zero. So really the equation of this line is just y is equal to two x plus zero, or just y equals two x. So I'm just gonna interchange the x and the y and solve for the new y. So to get this y by itself, I'm gonna multiply both sides by one half. And so now we get one half x is equal to y, or if I flip it, y is equal to one half x. Or we can write it in the inverse notation by saying f inverse of x is equal to one half x. Now, Remember, when you find the inverse graphically, what it looks like, it's a reflection over the line y equals x. So the line y equals x is this 45 degree line. It has like a slope of one. So I'll try to draw it accurately here for us. So it looks something like, like that, right? Let's label that y equals x. And when I fold that right branch over that graph, it's gonna look something like this, right? And it's gonna be the line y equals one half x. But Notice the domain and the range are switching. So the range becomes the domain over here. So this is gonna be x is greater than or equal to two, or you could, in interval notation, you could say from two to infinity. And the range is gonna be from one to infinity. So basically we're graphing this line y equals one half x, okay, which would look like this, rise one, run two, rise one, run two, okay, but we only want the part of this line where it's greater than or equal to two. So basically from here onwards, we just want this part of the line. Okay, now looking at the other half of the absolute value graph, the part of this graph here I've drawn as a dashed or dotted line, we're gonna look at where x is less than or equal to one or to the left of one here. So if we do that, we're gonna be looking at uh, a domain of negative infinity to one, and the range is still gonna be from two to positive infinity. But when you look at this dashed or dotted line, what's the equation of that line? Well, it has a y-intercept of four, 
and has a slope of negative two. So our equation is really y is equal to negative two x plus four. To find the inverse, we interchange the x and the y, and we solve for that new y. So I'm gonna subtract four from both sides and multiply everything by negative one half. So that's gonna give us negative one half x plus two is equal to y, or we can flip it and use the inverse notation, f inverse of x is equal to negative one half x plus two. And we wanna keep in mind that when we find this inverse, the domain and the range switch, right? So what happens is the range actually becomes the domain of our inverse function. So we could say x is greater than or equal to two, or if you're using the uh, interval notation, you can say from two to infinity, and our range is gonna be from negative infinity to one. Now graphically what that looks like when you fold this dashed or dotted line over the line y equals x is gonna look like this equation right here, negative one half x plus two. Now here's the y-intercept of two, slope of negative one half, that's down one over two, okay, down one over two. And what's interesting though is we only wanna start when x is greater than or equal to two. So we just want this part of the graph right here. I should have drawn that as a dashed or dotted line just to show you that it matches up with this dashed or dotted line. So you can see if we were to take this whole absolute value graph and reflect it, we would get this V-shaped graph on its side and it would fail the vertical line test, meaning that, you know, that this is not a function. What the horizontal line test says before you do that, if you do the horizontal line test, if it crosses more than once, then without having to graph this, you can see it's gonna pass or fail the vertical line test. So it's just a um, shortcut technique, but here what we're talking about is how to restrict that domain so that the inverse is a function. If you wanna see more examples, follow me to another video I did on this topic right there, and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you over in that video.